Hi, my name is Lalit and I'm a huge cricket fan. Uh, so I usually have crickets for lunch, that's how I believe. Well, my journey with cricket began in the year 1996 when Sri Lanka won their first time World Cup. I have vague childhood memories. I think I was six years old and all I can remember is just one name, Mr. Sanat J. Surya. I mean, as a kid, it was really fascinating to see someone who used to bat down the order, who was promoted to bat, to open the innings and who made each and every world-class baller look paltry. I mean, it was really something big and the craze was there, the atmosphere was there, we had a colour TV and it was really, really nice to see every ball that he used to hit going out of the park. And moreover, in the same time, my, I happened to visit uh, Vaishno Devi temple that's in Jammu and Kashmir. And I remember my uncle bought me a Kashmir willow bat. So that's how I got into the game. If I rewind back a little, look, if I look into my childhood, all I can see is I didn't have any fancy gadgets or toys to play around with. I had this beautiful game of cricket. So Sachin was my Superman, Dravid was my Batman and Zulu man, the real warrior. He was the He-Man, the hunk and I mean I carry the same values till today as well. So I mean the first thing I do in the morning is to look into Rahul Sharad Dravid's face, seek some empathy, humility, simplicity and then I head towards work. Cricket has been the greatest source of motivation in my life, be it professionally, academically or personally. Okay, let's talk about my academics. As a kid, well geography wasn't about remembering the locations on the maps, it was all about where Sachin Tendulkar used to score his tons, I used to simply visualize in my brain and boom, I rocked in geography. Then mathematics, let's come to. I'm good at it. Oh, I'm great at it, man. Well, if you have the multiples of four, sixes and projected scores running in your blood, even though you are sleeping, you, you have an edge over others and you tend to rock at your mental mathematics. I mean, I, till date, I don't use any calculator for small calculations. So I had an edge over others. Then coming back to biology, well, anatomy was simple, as simple. I mean, even before the curriculum started, I knew what hamstring, what tennis elbow, what groin and what other stuffs were. So it was simple. It was simple. And so this was about academics coming a little ahead in my college. So being a huge cricket fan, I, we had a subject called as computer graphics. So we had to do some graphics programming and all these things. So I mean, people were doing video games and stuff like that, but I was never into all that. So one thing was on top of my head was this beautiful game. So I wanted to do something with that. So I had come up with a mini version of uh, my, I mean, small scale version of cricket wagon wheel. I mean, wherein it displays the run scoring pattern of a batsman. And I mean, in my viva, the teacher, I mean, luckily he was a huge cricket fan as well, so, well, it worked for me, 50 on 50, bang on. And in the final year project for my uh, computer science final year, so I wanted to do something on the lines of Hawkeye and Hotspot, but somehow, the as you know, right, it's a team of four, so I can't take a decision. So, somehow things didn't work out well, but I wanted to do it, but somehow couldn't do it, but life's... Life, life's not that short as well. Maybe in some other time I can come up with some technology on cricket. So being an IT freak, I want to do something. Okay, I'll do it somehow. And that's the college part. And coming back a little towards my personal relations. So my dad is a dean and he's a sort of a strict professor. Uh, I mean, I'm not too sure. I mean, at home it's quite strict. But whenever India is playing against Pakistan, it's an altogether different ambience, different atmosphere. We behave like kids, we shout at each other, we cry, we hug each other. So it's all joy when India is playing against Pakistan. I mean, obviously it's tense as well, but it simplifies things and it's a beautiful thing. Well, I'm not being a humble brag here, but I have inherited certain traits in my personality from all these wonderful guys that at times gets reflected also. So one thing is you can learn how to be a leader from Ricky Ponting. He had this attitude, his, this persona, you have to win the game no matter how. So that should be one's attitude. You should not look back at your failure. You should move on in life, thrive for excellence. Then if you see honesty, Gilchrist is a perfect example. I mean, leave the Sydney test apart. So this guy is like, one simply does not walk off in a World Cup semi-final. I mean, 
that too after being given not out so that's mr adam gelkris for you then you have to be you have to show certain amount of commitment towards life towards your goal towards your family and your friends so the perfect example of commitment is i mean i i think i cannot say one name it should be two names actually anil kumble and graham smith anil kumble if you remember came out with a broken jaw and took brian lara's wicket and boom won the game turned the tide for india same thing happened with graham smith against australia the fierce attack bowling attack of mitchell johnson he came up with a broken hand broken rib still survived but somehow couldn't play the couldn't win the game for australia but won millions and billions of heart then you should be innovative in life at times i mean you should try out crazy things and that's where mr ab de villiers comes into picture he can play any damn shot in the textbook or not even in the book shot in the book he is such he is an epitome of innovativeness dedication is another attribute which you can learn from my all town favorite mr rahul sharal dravid so i mean who i mean the guy has played 31258 balls in test cricket wow it's something big you need patience and tremendous amount of will power to do that and he and he has been rewarded for that he is the highest run getter in test at number 3 with an average of 53 and then comes the brilliant the most important part fearless you should be fearless in your life you should take risks in life you should be just going on you should, some, some some impediment or something shouldn't stop you from your goals and that's where seva comes into picture his mantra is crystal clear hit the ball if it's in the range hit it simple as that no other physics chemistry or any calculations doesn't go in his head as simple as that keep it simple hit the ball go for your goals if you ask my personal favorite moments in cricket the list is huge so let's take it down in a chronological order so it all started in the year 1998 it, it was sharja sachin then dulkar was facing shane warne no doubt he gave sleep, sleepless nights to that man he was belted all around the park it was a desert storm moving a little further all as we all remember how good the 1999 world cup was I mean, come on man alan donald you should have run man at least you should have given a world cup to the south african team then if you see the in mean, the next decade the 2001 no one would have imagined india if i mean if india could won that game it was the third time in the history of the game that a team following on was on the victorious side all kudos thanks to mr rahul dravid and vvs lakshman that 335 runs partnership was out of this world then if you move a little ahead 2003 adelaide rahul dravid batted like god that 835 minutes of sheer great perseverance dedication made india won on the australian soil after 20 damn years it was like it was like out of the world brilliant is the word then 2005 if you move a little ahead i can still remember andrew flint of batting bretley it's okay mate it happens but today this time it was our time they won the ashes after a huge huge span of time then 2006 again Australia South Africa one of the fierce warriors of the game who would have imagined that the proteus would chase that mighty mammoth target of 434 thanks to gibbs and smith It was brilliant and then 2007 world cup no one believed in the young indian team they we were like minos going on the foreign soil and the young team young captain we delivered still remember misba <coughs> scooped it from over the fine leg fielder shri shad under it and takes it india wins still those words from ravi shastri it hits my head then sehwag again i mean sorry for bringing sehwag a lot of times here but I cannot help it in 2008 sehwag belted 319 man that innings was something i can tell my kids i watched that i watched sehwag bat then comes the most epic one amongst all india waited for how many years 28 years i think it was 2011 i mean india won the world cup kulasekara bowled the last kulasekara was bowling dhoni was on the crease facing it and boom dhoni finished it off in styles 
joy of eruptions uh, eruptions of joy in the entire country we were on roads it was brilliant it was mind blowing we, we had no words and you know being a die hard foodie uh, i can still imagine when india was 31 for 2 in that final i pray to god man let india win this time i will not eat chicken that's the most closest thing to me i left chicken for 6 months and i don't have any words yaar. i am I'm, i'm just getting a little nostalgic at the moment just like the goodwill of an asset at times is immeasurable it cannot be measured on a sheet of paper or on a piece of scale same thing is with cricket the my love for the game is divine and it has given me so much it has made me a better person better human being a good friend so i wish to give it back sometime so hopefully the time is very near and i'm working currently working on my dream project something related to cricket and we'll keep you posted about it if things go well thanks